Is it visible now, sir? There's nothing here. We see your documents. You must know that we are live. Ne? I just got a notification now. We are live. Uh, so everyone, when we speak, you, you put your video on. Uh, our committee is live. No manga manga business. Can you quickly beam the agenda? Okay. okay. Yes. Thank you for very much, uh, Wabalo. Uh, honorable members, uh, there is the um, that's the uh, agenda before us. Opening and welcoming apologies as presented uh, by Lubabalo uh, earlier on, and uh, adoption of the agenda consideration or consider and adopt uh, the draft uh, budgetary review and recommendations report, consideration and adoption of draft uh, committee minutes, and then we close uh, the meeting. Uh, honorable members, um, is there any one who wishes to adopt the agenda? Uh, Chair, Honorable Bergman. Honorable Bachman uh, is moving for the adoption of the agenda. Can we get a seconder? Hola, Chair. Honorable Mola is seconding uh, the, the adoption of the agenda. Thank you very much, uh, Lubabalo. We can now beam the B triple R. Is it difficult to beam the documents on your side? Lubabal? Where is Lubabalo now? And this away is Lubabal. I'll call him Chairperson now. Hi, Bo. Why is he disappearing? Where is Sweetheart? Sweetheart must assist him. I think he yeah. ran away. Hmm? I think he ran away. Okay, hello, Salo. I'm here, Chair. I'm, I'm looking, I'm, I'm checking if I, I'm beaming the correct version. Hmm. You are checking. What are you checking?
Good afternoon, Chairperson. Could Lubabalo uh, pass on the controls to me so that I can beam the report if he has, he's experiencing problems? Yeah, Lubabalo. Yes, sir. Send the report to Dineo uh, so that he, he, he or can he share the whatever. Yes, sir. So that enable her to enable, share sir. the document. So is she beaming now from her side? Oh, now this side. Okay. So, uh, honorable members, um, Today we are going to uh, deal with the draft report uh, of the BRRR. The report, honorable members, is 43 pages. And I know that um, you got uh, the document. It was sent uh, to all of us. Um, it was sent to 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 all of us a, a report. I know some of the members felt that a, it was a late a, that they have not received the report, but eventually we got the report. Uh, honorable members, uh, I want to suggest that um, we deal with the recommendations uh, in the main, but uh, suffice to say, uh, honorable members, uh, the, the report, uh, it covers, um, for instance, on the introduction, uh, it covers uh, mainly uh, the meeting that we held with the department and uh, the, 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 the engagements um, which we had with the audit risk uh, together with the AG on the annual report 2019-2020. And uh, that engagement is covered there and also covered uh, the documents uh, which were uh, consulted uh, for a holistic analysis uh, of the department, 2019 strategic plans, MTSF, and also covers uh, the, the oversight uh, mandate of the committee uh, on DERCO <coughs> and the purpose of the report uh, it is also covered there, uh, the objectives of the BRRR uh, itself, uh, section five of the money bills amendment procedure and related matters um, act and the National Assembly Truth Committee must assess uh, the service delivery performances, evaluate the effective and uh, efficient use and forward allocations of resources uh, of each uh, department. Uh, that, that's the main purpose. So uh, policy focus areas and also measurable objectives of the department, uh, they are there in, that, uh, in this report. And for sure, honorable members, uh, they saw uh, the report, uh, the presentation of the annual report as well. Um, is there? It also it covers the an overview uh, by the DG, uh, the analysis uh, of the annual report and financial statements of the department. Also, uh, they cover by and large uh, some of the things that we've been raising uh, ourselves as the as the portfolio committee. So. Um, I would uh, 
urge uh, with members that we 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 don't do a the 42 pages not unless there's a strong view that we do uh, the report a uh, page by page and uh, then we can do that if honorable members have read uh, the report extensively as they were preparing for this particular meeting otherwise i would suggest that we deal with the report uh, recommendations and then uh, if there are certain issues which are left out that if members have a sort of um, a noted when they were looking through the report uh, then we can deal with that uh, as well i see the hand of uh, honorable mpanza is up long before i could even finish what i'm saying here we are no no chef finish? finish i was just indicating that i would like to say something up. oh okay so we uh, should uh, honorable mpanza the no value. thanks very much and the findings by much. the committee we, we do the findings by the committee and and the recommendations yeah yes chair yeah no chair i wanted to second your proposal and also include the findings which you have also done but also add that uh, if uh, they are in a position of uh, the department's responses to the recommendations, if they can also deal with that one, so that we'll have a, a holistic uh, so view of, of what is the, the recommendation, the responses of the department yes. and the recommendations. And the, yes, Chair. And the, and the conclusion, perhaps, on the ARF. OK. Yes, Chair. Okay. Then I, I want to move uh, formally uh, your proposal as, as amended, Chair. OK, that's the mover. Can we get the second? Where are the people of this portfolio committee? Can we get anyone who is seconding the proposal by a Mr. Mpanza as amended, or is there anyone who has a contrary view? Honorable Muela. Honorable Chair, I second the proposal. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, <laughs> Honorable uh, Muela. Honorable Banza, can you please mute your mic? Thank you very much. So, uh, Honorable Members, without uh, me, Delela, 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 you, I'm going to ask Dinewa to take us through. Uh, the findings by the portfolio committee on the B triple R. Thank you, Chairperson, and uh, good afternoon, Chair and honorable members and colleagues. Um, Chairperson, with the the findings by the committee uh, which uh, emanated from the discussions and deliberations on the annual report as was uh, presented by the department and, and the ARF are as follows. The first one is on the audit performance uh, of the department in terms of its reporting whereby uh, the AG had found that uh, the performance reporting by the department has been uh, useful and reliable. And this has happened over, uh, 
almost three years now since uh, the beginning of uh, the era where the AG also audits performance uh, reporting. So this was a, a positive finding by the AG on, on, the, on the performance of the department. Now with finding number two, it's where the committee found out that uh, the, the department had received a qualified audit opinion for 2019-20. And the, the basis for that qualified audit opinion is uh, the fact that the AG couldn't get information, uh, sufficient information or evidence to support the amount disclosed in the disallowance account, which is the amount of 188 million. And, and the fact that the internal controls deficiencies were identified by the Auditor General, uh, which were found to be as a result of weaknesses in the financial internal controls, uh, to the effect that the foreign cash collections and, and transfers, you know, bank accounts in the by processed by missions uh, were not, they, they were showing some weaknesses. And then there was also ineffective record keeping or management in place in terms of the, those missions and also uh, at headquarters. And then the department also confirmed this finding by the Auditor General in terms of uh, lack of information, evidence for, for the 188, uh, weaknesses in, in, in financial internal controls and uh, ineffective record keeping. Now, Chairperson, the third finding is on financial statements, where the AG had found that uh, the department still had, their financial statements still had uh, mistakes, material uh, mistakes and uh, adjustments were made but uh, some of them had not been affected. And uh, the committee will be reminded that this is the area where the committee had found that uh, the problem, this challenge of misstatements started in 2013-14, 2013-14. And also the issue with problems with assets register, the completeness and uh, effectiveness also started in 2013. And the issue of, um, of uh, there was also heritage assets, which also started around that time. But the coincidence which the committee spoke about earlier, I mean, in other meetings, is the fact that the CFO also started acting in that office in 2013. Uh, with regard to four uh, chairperson and honorary members. This is where um, it was noted that transactions of this nature require a, a finance team that is adequately qualified to deal with complex accounting standards within diverse multi-currency environment. This is where honorary members found out that the department is dealing with uh, multi-currencies. They are 125 uh, missions abroad, and they deal with uh, currencies of those countries. So there is a need for, for, for a, a finance team that will be able to, 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 to deal with uh, foreign exchange gains and losses. And it, it, that requires high level skills and also frequent reconciliation exercises to be performed by the missions on time. So that was found to be lacking. Hence, a improper record keeping has actually uh, precipitated the fact that the department with the 188 million, it's not able to say, I mean, to, to have records of what transpired, which uh, accumulated up to 188 million because there is no record keeping and they are not reconciling uh, their books as required on a daily basis. 
and they find themselves waiting for a, a, a long time and then they at times information gets lost on the way there are no daily reconciliation of uh, transactions and also the information that is on record should the, the, if they have information on record they should be able to unpack uh, what the receiver the receivables are composed of so that challenge uh, was noted by members with regard to the finding of the auditor general number five finding chapterson is where the committee found out that actually uh, the department also has challenges with regard to compliance to specifically supply chain management because of the uh, number six will also talk to that it's because of the contracts which were irregularly awarded and one such uh, contract was awarded and the CFO was charged but not found guilty the one uh, BT communications as a result of this the department has incurred uh, irregular expenditure of about 217 million with number seven chairperson is with regard to unauthorized expenditure which uh, the committee found that because of the ceiling imposed by national treasury on compensation of employees the department find itself with uh, warm bodies who are more than what the budget can cover as a result, uh, they find themselves year after year uh, having an authorized expenditure in terms of uh, compensation of employees. Uh, number eight, Chairperson, is when the, the committee found out that the committee had asked for a, a list of personnel in the finance uh, branch and the committee found out that almost 80 percent of the personnel who title whose titles were state accountant in the finance branch they only had matric and no basic accounting qualifications finding number nine person speaks to the previous recommendations of the committee with regard to the improper fit which uh, the committee uh, found out as early as their orientation visit to the department the fact that a, a finance branch is also responsible for supply chain and property management and the committee has made a casual link to say cosa there is there is a link uh, between the irregular expenditure on state-owned properties and then and the lack of skills in the built environment in the finance branch that was a finding now with 10 chairperson um, the committee called for a forensic investigation on the awarding of contracts and asked the director general to report to it on a quarterly basis 11 it's where the committee noted uh, achievements in the implementation of South Africa's foreign policy to the fact that uh, South Africa is a, a recognized uh, international player and it has also uh, championed aspirations of developing countries including, including those of Africa and the global south the with regard to the arf chapter which is number 12 the committee noted that uh, it has received an unqualified audit outcome without uh, findings and which is a clean audit and the committee commended the arf for continuously performing well and presenting fairly uh, on financial statements of the entity with regard to 13 
it was noted that consequence management was not effectively applied. Uh, wrongdoers were not immediately subjected to uh, requested disciplinary measures. And the fact that leadership of the department has, has, has been very slow or reluctant to take a recommended remedial action. This came from both uh, the audit committee we, when it met uh, the, the, the committee and also from the, the, the auditor general. The issue of ICT uh, chairperson, uh, the committee made another uh, finding to say this problem has been recurring and previous reports by the department had provided for turnaround strategies to address uh, this issue, but seemingly uh, progress is, is very slow, but to no avail. Then, Chairperson, there were discussions that the committee, where the committee also raised the following issues during the discussions on the on the on the annual report. Number fifteen is where the committee uh, wanted to find out whether the, there was any value for money in public diplomacy and protocol under Program Four, and further. Pro, uh, Clarity was sought on the amount of money allocated for running Ubuntu radio. With regard to 16 Chairperson, is uh, where the committee noted that some of the contracts which were awarded were awarded to people who did not have any tax clearance. Uh, but for SARS, hence they were regarded as irregularly awarded. Number 17. Uh, the committee noted that, uh, but the, the fact that the department did not unpack information on the 188 million, where actually what is because the AG had noted, the, the National Treasury had warned the department about this, and the AG also uh, spoke to the department about it. So department reclassified. They, they changed the account or renamed it disallowance and damages. By so doing, the committee was of the view that this was a, 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 an opportunity for the department to move for a right of, of the funds. With regard to 18 uh, chairperson, chairperson um, the members have requested a list of South Africans occupying uh, positions in multilateral bodies. It was also number 19. Uh, there was also um, a concern that transferred officials in the missions with comorbidities were asked to travel back home without a due consideration of the associated risk with COVID-19. Number 20, Chairperson, uh, the committee uh, sought clarity as to what it is that the African Renaissance Fund is doing that the department is not doing uh, in also for it also to obtain to obtain a clean audit. 21, it's where um, the committee unanimously uh, resolved that based on the recurring findings of the Auditor General and the challenges of the department in addressing matters in the finance branch, the committee would require uh, the department to investigate receivables and if there is evidence of wrongdoing, uh, the matter will be, the committee wants to refer the matter to SCOPA. Now, with responses by the department to the issues, the findings which were raised and observations which were raised by the members, the first uh, response was that the department actually acknowledged uh, the fact of the 188 million that it, it, it would not be explained by the department. As a result, the department has taken steps 
and it's 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 conducting um, it's taken steps in order to have a forensic investigation into the matter, and it has put a deadline of February 2021, so that uh, the department can have enough time to address the finding before the end of the financial year. So the 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 undertaking by the department is that this matter will be resolved before the end of the financial year. With regard to the other response, Chaperson, which refers to weaknesses in foreign cash management and effect in ineffective record uh, keeping, the department also confirmed that that there is uh, they agree with the Auditor General on the matter, and they are also going to be embarking on a forensic investigation which will uh, which will assist them. They had actually initially asked the Auditor General to assist as early as October 2019 when this matter was 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 noticed by 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 National Treasury. And then the Auditor General at the somewhere in February expressed concern that he, he he was not going to be able to assist the department because he felt conflicted and declined to assist so the department had to now uh, continue and try and address this matter which uh, unfortunately they were left with that predicament and there was a finding there too but it looks uh, now the department is saying by February 2021, the matter would have been would have been addressed. With number, the other find uh, re response to the department from the department was on unauthorized expenditure. It was uh, explained that actually it it emanates from compensation overspending on compensation of employees on program two and three, which is unavoidable. Uh, because this is with concern with the employees who are mostly in the missions. And then uh, because of the ceiling set by National Treasury, which falls far low, far too low from the actual incumbents at headquarters and those in the missions abroad, the, the department has found itself in this uh, predicament. However, in order to address this matter, the department has tabled a proposal at cabinet level to reduce the number of missions abroad. Uh, but since closing of missions, it's something that uh, it's diploma, you know, in diplomacy, you have to negotiate with the receiving state. Uh, it will not be immediate, but it's a process which the department undertook to to start uh, doing so that they are able to, to reduce the number of missions to address this issue of the ceiling of uh, on compensation of employees. And they will be reporting to the committee at the appropriate time. With regard to fruitless and wasteful expenditure, which was recorded, um, the department explained that this is due to delays in occupying accommodation for, for accommodations for head of missions or officials transferred abroad. Uh, such accommodation remains vacant for months before the next person arrives on posting. And this would, could be done uh, to other administrative measures which have been unt uh, undertaken prior to the departure of such officials, including security clearance and ACRIMO, because uh, before uh, an individual is posted, uh, the sending state has to send an ACRIMO to the receiving state so that they are able to, to agree to uh, receiving uh, the person who is being uh, posted abroad. So some of this take long and also the issue of uh, clearance list of South Africans working in international organizations abroad 
as, as well as the, the report, the skills audit report conducted by PCITA, uh, much as the audit committee had reported to the committee that it was not happy with the report. Hence, it re, uh, recommended that another process be undertaken with regard to audit, uh, skills audit. Then on, on the root causes for not paying service providers within the prescribed 30 days, the, the committee had asked for this report um, in July for submission in August. So the, report, the department has reported that the, the, the report is ready. And uh, it, it emerged that among other causes of of uh, not paying on time is because uh, one service provider such as MTN or Vodacom would submit many invoices for the many subscribers that are in the department. And then these invoices would have to be verified individually. And therefore that took a bit of, I mean, took a, a, a long time to, to finalize and it resulted in delays in delays in payments for those invoices. However, the department has undertaken to implement recommendations of the report. Under human resources, the, the committee had asked what the uh, what was categorized as other under the misconduct uh, list, which was provided by the department. So. The department responded to say there were 12 cases of misconduct, six were categorized as other, and this other category, it included three cases of unauthorized absence, two of insubordination, and one on assault. The, there was another question by the committee which uh, they wanted more information as to reports which were coming from some of the missions that, I mean, some of the citizens that they were not uh, being assisted during the, the lockdowns. So it was, respond, the department responded to say they can confirm, they could confirm that uh, indeed service, consular services were extended to South Africans abroad throughout the lockdowns. And in some services were even offered online for citizens. Then with regard to the ARF performance, which the committee had asked, how come the ARF is, is, is getting it right in terms of its financial statements? The committee, the, the department uh, explained that uh, as, as an entity, the financial statements of the ARF are prepared in, 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 in relation to CRAP, while the department is using uh, modified cash standards. But the finance department or, depart or the department pre prepares the statements for, for the department. Uh, with regard to the role of US, in, in South Africa relations with the US, the department confirmed that uh, the US relations with South Africa are still cordial and the US through USAID continues to support the HIV programs in schools in the country. With regard to waiver of visas, the question was whether um, the South Africans would be able to, to also go into Saudi Arabia, into the Gulf states without a, a need for a visa. And the, the department responded to say, unfortunately, uh, the visa, the waiver of visa agreement is, is, is not based on reciprocity. It's a one-way process. It's only when uh, they come to South Africa. With regard to radio, I mean, to Ubuntu radio, it was explained that it's a way, it's a tool that is used by the department to communicate South Africa's foreign policy abroad. 
and also uh, in Africa internationally and in the country. It was chosen to be uh, one model for, for communication because it it, 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 it was proven to be cheap to run, to the effect that it pays, the department pays about 7,000 a month on streaming costs. And then with regard to a question which was asked by, uh, by the committee with regard to the readiness of the African standby force, whether it was ready, uh, the, the department responded to that they, they have been, indeed the African standby force is ready. They have been joined uh, military exercises called, you know, codenamed Amani Africa, which actually took place, uh, they were hosted by South Africa, which proved that uh, South Africa, I mean, the stand, African standby force is ready and the component of uh, rapid response from SADAC also uh, was in a state of readiness. So the meeting, which is scheduled for the 6th of December this year on, on, on the AU Extraordinary Summit on silencing the guns, uh, the readiness of the African standby force and the readiness of other regions will be discussed in that meeting, in that Extraordinary Summit of the AU. South Africa also, um, the department reported that South Africa remained committed to fighting terrorism. Uh, it was also, it also expressed concern in the developments in the Cabo Delgado, uh, which were seen to be undermining AU efforts to silence the guns. Uh, South Africa was asked, the department was asked whether South Africa was still in the AU Peace and Security Council and it said, no, not this year. However, Lesotho hosted the AU Peace and Security Council, and the council has expressed its concern on terrorism in Africa. A question was asked also by the committee in terms of uh, whether it, do, it is correct for leaders to suppress popular uh, mass mobilization by by the populace in terms of when they challenge election results. So the department referred uh, the committee to AU instruments on promotion of human rights and democracy, that it is expected that leaders in Africa would abide by those instruments and not suppress popular uprisings and mass mobilization. Uh, with regard to the issue on the reform of the UN Security Council, the department responded to say, indeed, South Africa continues to push for the reform of the UN Security Council. And also President Ramaphosa uh, confirmed this message uh, during his uh, uh, his uh, statement uh, in the, in the UN Security, I mean, in the UN Security Council, and South Africa also is 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 it's aligning itself to the aspirations of the Ezulunu consensus, where Africa was uh, uh, to obtain two permanent seats in the UN Security Council. So uh, it continues to to keep this issue alive within. Uh, the UN Security Council, where it was acting, where it's ending its uh, its tenure this month, and also it is uh, chairing this month in the UN Security Council. Conclusions, uh, honorable chairperson and honorable members, it's uh, just an assessment which the committee made in terms of uh, the fact that non-financial non performance of the department has been commendable in that it has been uh, uh, reliable and also useful, according to the Auditor General. And also uh, the committee noted efforts undertaken to contribute towards a better life for all South Africans and also to 
you know, activities which are carried by the department in order to have a stable and secure continent and also for creating a better world for all. The committee also uh, expressed satisfaction with the department, with the fact that the department uh, used its budget in accordance with the plans. And it has also used full, uh, demonstrated full accountability to parliament and the, the people of South Africa on the resources spent. And uh, the, the expenditure was also in alignment with the national priorities. And also uh, the department was also applauded uh, for continuing to position South Africa as a respected member of the international community uh, with a dynamic and independent foreign policy that speaks to the country's domestic priorities. Uh, the committee also, in conclusion, noted new and other serial weaknesses highlighted by the Auditor General. It further welcomed the acknowledgement and commitment by the department to improve in addressing those operational challenges, which, uh, for which uh, consequence management and maintaining clean governance approach will, will, will prevail. Uh, the accounting officer and senior management, and in particular the finance branch, were regarded as critical in addressing the recurring challenges that renders the department unable to qualified uh, audit opinions. Uh, attitude to and knowledge of their work, cooperation, and attendance of meetings where these issues are addressed were regarded as important links for enhancing performance of the department. The department also expressed determination and undivided attention to pursue best practices in the area of consequence management, expenditure management, contract management, financial management, supply chain and information and uh, communications technology as raised by the Office of the Auditor General. Uh, as a result of these confirmations, the committee noted that there is room for improvement with necessary adjust adjustments in service delivery. With regard to the ARF, the committee found that the overall performance of the ARF is good and however cautioned against the slow pace of migrating to an agency, which is the uh, SADPA, as directed by cabinet in 2009. Uh, the committee acknowledged that, uh, noted that the ARF was actually working in line with the aspirations of the NDP in pursuing peaceful and prosperous Africa. Uh, and uh, the committee also urged the department to make sure that uh, public diplomacy disseminates the good work done through uh, this soft power of foreign policy in South Africa, the ERF. And now, uh, Chairperson with, and Honourable Members, with regard to recommendations, these recommendations, Chairperson, were if I'm allowed to This recommendation, Chairperson, if you allow me so that I, members can see where they come from. With regard to uh, finding number one uh, on the performance of, of information of the department, the recommendation is that the department should maintain the standard of unqualified uh, opinion on performance reporting and apply the same strategy that it uses, you know, to, to, to have unqualified opinion on performance. It should apply the same strategy to improve the financial reporting. So with that uh, first finding by the committee, this is where this uh, recommendation is coming from. That's recommendation one. Uh, recommendation two, Chairperson, 
it's related to finding number two, which uh, talks to the fact that the department has received a qualified audit opinion because of lack of evidence uh, supporting the amount that is disclosed and also challenges with foreign cash collections in the missions and transfer purposes by missions and also the ineffective record keeping uh, that was established by, by the AG and the committee. So recommendation two, which addresses that matter is that uh, the department should immediately conduct a forensic investigation into the unexplained transaction totaling 188 million and report to the committee on the findings, recommendations and implementation thereof. With regard to um, finding number three, which is on financial statements and finding number four, which is on a lack of uh, ability to deal with diverse multi-currency uh, environment and and uh, yes and and also uh, inability to reconcile transaction transaction on a da daily basis and also to trace all gains and losses in the missions uh, a recommendation which will take those three uh, findings is recommendation three, Chairperson, which will say con uh, consider approaching the Office of the Accountant General in National Treasury to conduct a thorough competency assessment of the finance function, as well as provide support to the identified skills deficiencies in the finance uh, branch. Chairperson, uh, 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 honorable members, this is where the committee was uh, referring to possibility of having someone seconded from National Treasury to assist the department. So this, <clears throat> this recommendation speaks directly to say uh, the department should approach the Office of the Accountant General this time around so that uh, it's able to conduct a thorough competency assessment and, uh, and also provide support of to the identified skills deficiencies in the finance uh, department. Uh, finding number five, which talks to supply chain management and there are six on contracts and uh, the one on unauthorized expenditure and also on the 80% of personnel. This all talk to what the committee said, it's lack of skills, not lack of uh, required skills. So the recommendation, which will talk to those four above is for the department to recruit new employees, including qualified accountants, including personnel accredited by the Institute of Chartered Accountants in near future or through other means. And also conduct a skills audit in the finance branch to determine whether there is appropriate capacity and capacitate the branch accordingly to address the root causes of recurring qualified opinions. So this recommendation, Chairperson and honorable members will talk to the four findings which uh, the committee made. Now with a, a recommendation on the improper fit, which the department has spoken to, I mean, the committee had identified on their orientation visit as far as that time uh, to say there is a link between, uh, you know, property management uh, problems there together with the necessary skills which are in the finance department and also the, uh, the, the, the inability for the finance branch to actually deal with uh, with properties. So what, the recommendation is a review the organizational structure and separate finance from property management. Chairperson, here I would, I would uh, if you allow me Chairperson to correct this one, a uh, supply chain and finance are together under the PFMA. 
So if chairperson, if we can, we can be allowed to do that correction there. The separation should be between the finance branch and property management. Please correct it, Okay, Chair. Um, okay, Chair. Uh, property management is going to be in the Foreign Service uh, Act, which will come into force in 2021, and therefore it has to be a, a separate entity, as the committee has is recommending and has recommended it before. With uh, number 10, Chairperson, uh, it's where the committee called on uh, the department to have a forensic, forensic investigation on the awarding of contracts. And the committee now is even going further to say recommendation six, which will talk to that, is to the department to terminate all irregularly awarded contracts with service providers and report on a quarterly basis to the committee. With regard to uh, finding number 11 on consequence management, uh, which was identified that uh, leadership is either slow or reluctant, the committee recommends that the accounting officer should show what steps will be taken as a remedial action on those responsible for root causes of negative audit outcomes for the department and report quarterly. Um, then on ICT, Chairperson, and uh, the turnaround strategy, which uh, the Auditor General said it, it, it was not uh, yielding results fast enough, the committee recommends that uh, since the, the department has reported that there are some steps that they are taking, there is a team, some te the ministerial team and also a team of independent experts which the department had commissioned and they they, they are implementing uh, the short term short term uh, recommendations which uh, the department uh, the teams had recommended so there is some movement there so the committee uh, recommends therefore that they should fast track those processes aimed at upgrading the ICT infrastructure to safeguard information and further, the department should investigate whether the irregularly awarded contracts which relate to ICT, whether they have no, whether they had any bearing on the blockages on progress relating to, to the modernization of, uh, of the ICT. Chairperson, I think this is uh, as far as uh, the recommendations go. Thank you very much. Honorable members, uh, that's the report. Uh, can we deliberate on it? Can we? I see hands. I see one hand. Honorable Bergman. Sure, thanks very much. Followed um, <clears throat> by uh, Honorable Bergman. Chair, sure, thanks very much. Sure, I've looked at the reports. I must say, when you said that this is going to be live, I was very concerned because I knew what was coming. And uh, I was very embarrassed for the uh, department. Um, and then when Danaya started reading the reports, I got even more embarrassed. And when she mentioned the date that the financial statements started going um, a bit pear-shaped, and she mentioned the date that uh, the CFO started in an acting position, she held no punches. The, the sad thing is, though, you know, not to tie back to any individual, but the premise of this whole report is the financial statements, and everything starts off with the financial statements as a start. Then it goes on to the organizational structure, and then we take it from the organizational structure that, uh, you know, the fact that there's two, the, the two bulls in a crawl story. Now, underneath the organizational structure, 
you either belong to the CFO or you belong to the DG. Now, when we talk about investigations, you have to ask yourself, who investigates if the CFO is being investigated or if the DG is investigated? So we look at the HR department. The HR department falls under the CFO. The um, internal audit committee answers to the CFO. The legal department answers to the CFO. In all the meetings that they've had with us, they've always told us that they've tried to advise the EXCO committee. In fact, legal doesn't even sit on the EXCO committee anymore. Um, international, uh, internal audit has told us that they've pulled out the last remaining hairs that they've got on their head, trying to give um, feedback to the to to the CFO. They they're out of ideas. Um, so when it comes to investigating, or when it comes to actually trying to assist how do you investigate or how do you you know how do you investigate your own boss and this is the kind of problems that we face now and none of the recommendations in our b triple r really speak to that you know none of them really give us the meat to speak to that now i've brought up the fact that there's these reports that exist that each time there's a minister there's always been a report that's been written each time a minister has come to power there's always been a report that's been commissioned an independent report i'd like to add it into the b triple i as a recommendation that maybe those reports can be served in these committees for us to see as an oversight for us to deliberate on those reports obviously not much we can do once you know now that they've finalized reports but maybe we can just have sites of those report recommendations, see what they recommended and see whether there's not something that we can take from those reports and, and help them to implement in terms of an organizational structure that, that could assist Durko in assisting them in, in building an, uh, an organization, which has been one of their biggest problems. The second problem that is, as also seems to not be uh, well contained in our recommendations it's, it's 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 put there but it's not you know it's it's pretty much over it's it's too broad i think is the rt challenge and i think we've we've understated it i've asked the question in parliament and i've also we, we've had the presentation in our committee the fact that our rt system is not just outdated it's the challenges that it presents is that when we are abroad and we have certain information or we're sharing information is that we're actually compromised in many aspects. We, we, we have the system that we're actually we're vulnerable in the sense that we actually rely on uh, help from people overseas. Um, we have a system that that's in, in terms of what has been said to us seems pretty outdated. Um, and therefore, when it comes to sharing of information, or when it comes to trust of of, inf of of information, it just seems to me that we we what what should be our number one priority in the protection of data seems to have been a, a, a pretty failed, you know, it's, it's it's a pretty failed approach. Now, if there's one thing that any mission is is uh, rated on, it, it is their information. It's information they can pass from their emission abroad to to headquarters and if that is compromised or, or people are, don't feel don't feel comfortable passing that type of information well you know we don't really we don't really have that we don't, we don't really have that uh, you know we don't, we, we're wasting our time with all these footprints all over the world and that brings me to the third point we have the second biggest footprint in the world. South Africa has the second biggest footprint only to America. And we've seen through COVID-19, as I said last week, how this failed us in many aspects during COVID-19, where we saw a lot of the times that some of our missions were ill-prepared and a lot of our officials hardly knew what to do, although there were many officials that were very helpful and, and actually went beyond the call of duty. But I watched, we all witnessed a few weeks ago as, as our directors uh, threw some of our their own officials under the bus in this committee. 
in trying to explain how the the consulate general in Los Angeles um, couldn't get accommodation and how the uh, corporate service manager was to blame. And uh, I think we saw in asking the questions and even the minister's response has shown us that there's two sides to the story. And I think that uh, I think this committee has a lot of digging to do. And I think this committee has, has again, will see that this organizational structure has let us down again by the fact that the footprint is too big, that there's not enough oversight of our missions abroad, that they're free to do their own thing, that there's not enough management of what takes place abroad. And again, nothing in the recommendations allows that oversight of, of headquarters to oversight those missions. So again, I think we need to tighten up a recommendation that suggests that our KPIs focus more on what happens in those missions, starting with the fact that instead of politically closing missions, we should actually be closing missions that don't make sense. Uh, missions that are in places that we actually don't have any trade, places that we, we're, we're, we're not visiting, places that we don't have any relationships with. And I think we need to start doing that as a matter of urgency because we're not getting around to these missions. We're spending too much money on those missions. And we need to identify those missions very quickly. Um, and I think that has to be in the recommendations. And I propose that, please, as a matter of urgency, that we put those in the recommendations. And as a fourth, that we put in the recommendations, the KPIs, the KPIs of heads of missions in, 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 those, in those reports that serve to us. That, that at least there's some indicators of how the performance of those missions are, are taking place. Thank you very much, Chair. That was too long. Hey, Honorable Son. Thank you, Chair. Let me assist Honorable Bergman by stating that one of the missions that should be closed. But, uh, Chairperson, let me start with let me start with corrections. Um, what I observed while reading the document on page 16, the ARF um, said that money was dispersed for election observers in Malawi. However, South Africa did not have delegates to go and observe elections in Malawi. And page 20, we have uh, the uh, awarding of, of tenders without tax clearance from the SARS. I would like to also add that the Auditor General's finding also added that it's not only the SARS documents that are missing from these awarded tenders, it's also declaration forms. It's quite important to note that Chairperson in our report. And then Chairperson, now when it comes to discussion, Chair, um, the independent forensic investigation that will audit the fraud that is happening in this department or the shenanigans that are happening in this department, we must acknowledge that it's also going to cost the department millions, which um, you are taking millions to investigate millions which have been stolen or missing. Also finding out that the Auditor General has raised the flag that millions are missing. So, so those such recommendations we, we really need to look at. And then Chairperson, there's a line on page 23 which says that the committee is satisfied with the utilization of the budget and resources spent. I don't think as a committee sitting here, we are very satisfied with anything that this department has done to date because funds are being looted, funds are going missing, funds are being unallocated, there's unauthorized expenditure. And then, Chairperson, the reduction of missions, um, on the report it reads that it's, it, the, the reduction of missions was sent to the cabinet. Um, as the committee coming back, we need to look at this because the reduction of missions needs to be analyzed in the committee first and because we made recommendations to say that if there are reductions in missions we also need to strategize at looking at missions not 
in the African continent, Chairperson, and also lastly, Chair, we made a recommendation on the 25th of November in our meeting and also on the 26th when the Chairperson was closing that this department be taken to SCOPA. Although I don't see that on this report, I'm wondering why why that that uh, recommendation is not in the B triple I uh, chairperson. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Chairperson. Uh, first of all, let us uh, thank uh, our content uh, advisor for the well um, presented report. And the chair, I just want to say we, I have noted uh, what other colleagues are saying in terms of adding, because I think what we should be doing here is to actually be briefing up the recommendations that we are making. And I think uh, Honorable Bergman and uh, Msani, they were doing exactly that. And Chair, uh, I think I have seen something that talks about SCOPA, but uh, <clears throat> it's not, saying exactly in the manner that is uh, M Msani is uh, honorable Msani is saying it's captured in a different way which i think it, it's to me it's it's okay as long as there is that mention of uh, scopa how we do it the process uh, is another matter and i think uh, if at the end of the day uh, if we don't get any joy in terms of the investigation or the outcomes indicate that there is some criminal activities uh, that implicates uh, certain individuals, then we can look at uh, uh, involving the law enforcement and also referring uh, some of those issues to, to, to SCOPA uh, from, from, from the department. So Chairperson, I think this is work in progress. And I think what we should be now saying as a, another re a recommendation, I don't know whether it's captured there, that when we come back next year, we can then use these recommendations and the responses of the department uh, as our checklist. And then we, 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 we hold them on what we have recommended and then how they are responding. Uh, to, to that one. So, so that at least maybe on a monthly basis, we must get a, an update as to how they are implementing uh, these recommendations and then we measure them against that. So I would say, Chairperson, for now, I don't think there's much we can do. This has just been uh, empowering us and also this is what we are recommending as a committee. And with all the amendments that uh, the two honorables have added and maybe some other uh, honorables are going to be adding some after, after, after um, I've spoken, then we can then uh, look at then uh, moving for those recommendations uh, to be uh, maybe tabled uh, at Parliament uh, when the time is right. Thanks very much, Chairperson. Uh, who, no one else, ne? we are all covered. Can we move for the adoption of the report with the amendment? That should be made. Sure. Honorable Ngozi. It's me, Honorable. I see hands here on the system. Your system, you can, on your system, you can't raise hands. Uh, I think there's a problem. I'm in Transkai. And people have no water there in your village. 
Honorable Nkosi, a noted village. No, thanks, Chair. Thanks, Chair, and my apologies for uh, joining the meeting in and out. Um, I, I want to move for adoption of the report with those amendments uh, that have been suggested, Chair. And uh, the second point, the second point I just want to make after moving is that we should differentiate between matters that we want to debate and matters that must be in the report. Thank you. Uh, Honorable Ngon. <clears throat> yes, yes, yes. Thanks, Chair. I, I wish to second the adoption of the report. And I think uh, Honorable Ngosi is saying what I wanted to highlight. That there's a difference between the agreement of the committee and the matters that were raised as, as part of the discussion. But in a nutshell, Chair, the, the report in its entirety uh, is indicative of a thorough going work done by the by the committee, uh, which I think is is commendable and uh, the hard work is commendable. I hereby second the adoption. Thank you. Honorable Reverend Mushwe. Rev. Yes, I'm covered here. Thank you so much. Oh, you, you wanted to to second, to adopt? Yes, ma'am. That's what I wanted to do. Okay. Um, honorable members. Chair. Uh, the report is, uh, you want to come for a second bite now? No, Chair. I want you to please note uh, the rejection of the EFF. Thank you. Oh, I can look. We are not surprised. The most what's the how to be how to be honorable. Chair, just from our side, we'll just reserve our right at this stage. Thanks. Always, thank you. Uh, <laughs> always, Coca Cola. Uh, honorable members, um, we we are going to get the final product uh, with the amendments uh, as the meeting agreed uh, so the report is adopted uh, noting uh, the rejection uh, of the fighters and also uh, the democratic alliance reserving the right to adopt or not to adopt until they consult we know uh, we respect uh, your views as the portfolio committee uh, but however the report stands adopted by the portfolio committee because uh, overwhelmingly overwhelmingly that's what we have agreed on as the portfolio committee so can we move to the Next point on the agenda, I see the Deputy Minister uh, Kendit Mashiko Lamini has uh, joined us. Uh, welcome, uh, Deputy Minister. Lubabalo, can you please boom, beam the minutes so that we deal with the minutes now? Lubabalo, Azigui minutes. Lubabalo. Masalo. Ay, Lubabalo. Mazinge, Negalo, Gui minutes. Masbela, Peskrini. Nazi chair. Yes. Ziabunagala, sir. Um, honorable members, uh, those are the minutes of the 7th of October, uh, page one. 
page two. Phase three. Page four. Page five. Page, page four. Page five. Page six. Page seven. Page seven. Oh, this was the last page, Jen. I got move. You are not moving. You are on standstill. Oh, my apologies, sir. Can we move for the adoption of the minutes, honorable members, since you have nothing to say? Are they? I move to the minutes uh, as a true reflection. I second, Honorable Chair. Thank you. Is Honorable Swartz in this meeting, guys? <laughs> this set of meetings. Can you mute your mic, Honorable Banz? Okay. Squella, can you please move fast? And as you said. Minutes of the 20th of October, honorable members. Page one. Page two. Three. Send you with three again. Page three on our members. Four. Five. Six. Page six. And this is the last last page, sir. Is there anything you want to raise? Honorable members. Can we move for the adoption of the minutes? I so move, Chair. Honorable Ngola is moving for the minutes. Uh, can you get a second now? A second, Chair. Can we move to the next set of minutes? Yes, sir. This is the 12th of November, sir. OK. Page one. Page two. Page three. Page four. Okay. Yes, Honorable Mson. And the point number three, um, the AG was asked on why do they not invoke the Public Audit Amendment Act and 
also I noted that their response is not there, which said that um, they are currently dealing with um, committees which have uh, bigger amounts of billions. So meaning that they are not capacitated to deal with smaller uh, millions now to invoke the Public Amendment Act. I think that is very important. It should be reflected on the minutes, Chair. Right, did they say that? Did they say that? Yes, they said that, Chair. The answer was um, currently they are dealing with uh, irregularities of up to billions. Um, so the millions they will have to do in the next batch. You can go to the recording, Chair. That's not how they put it. I, I know I noted what they said, but that's not how they put it. Uh, now I'm checking my notes. Yeah, I'm checking my notes. What you are raising now, Honorable Musani, will will have to be subjected to verification uh, in terms of the recording itself, but that's not how they put it. They did say that they will look into that thing. I think Chair, for recording purposes, if our secretariat can go and listen to the recording and then um, install it in the minutes, because currently there's nothing that says about the invoking of the Public Amendment Act and there's no response from the department. It can only be included on the minutes subject to verification. So, Agreed. What, so it means then therefore, if it is on the recording, then the minutes will be amended as such, as such and we, we, we now we are going to adopt the minutes pending the verification of what uh, you have just raised. Ah, because I know they even said that SOEs are worse because of the magnitude of their budgets uh, when they responded to this thing, not per se they won't be dealing with it so yeah so nan so okay have you noted that Lubabar? yes Jefferson I've noted it mm. okay can we move for the adoption of the minutes with pending amendments? I move, Chair. Can I we second. get second? Honorable Suarez, yo, Skesibi voice, Yako. Can we have a second? I second the minutes, Chair. Thank you very much. Uh, welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, next set of minutes. We have 25th of November, Chair. 25th of November. Uh, honorable members, first page, page one. Phase three. Phase three. This is the last page, Islam. Islam. 
Chairperson, your closing remarks at this particular meeting and also some of the resolutions that were taken at this particular meeting. I don't want to quote it out of quotes, but this is the meeting, Chairperson, where the committee spoke deeply about taking the department to SCOPA. And also on the closing remarks of the chairperson, there is very much that is short changed with regards to those resolutions. So I would recommend chairperson that uh, it, it be looked at again. Uh, uh, Chair? Yes? Uh, if I may, Chair, the, the, re the resolution chair is under section five. And uh, Chair, we say that the committee resolved that based on the recurring findings of the Auditor General and the challenges of the department in addressing the matters in the finance branch uh, to refer the department to scrutiny of the standing committee on public accounts, Chair. It is captured That's there on the paragraph two. Yes. Can we now move for the adoption of the minutes? I move, Chair, for the adoption of the minutes. Can you get a second? Huh? I second the chair. Thank you very much, Honorable Next set of minutes. Uh, 26 November, chair. 26 November, minutes, Honorable Members, page one. Next page. 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 And yeah, this is the last last page. Now. Can we move for adoption? Chair, I move for the adoption of the minutes. Can you get Can a second, second honorable chair? Uh, thank you very much. Was that the last set of minutes? Merci.
Yes, it's done. Okay, uh, honorable members, uh, that was the last set of uh, minutes. Um, and uh, I want to thank uh, all members of the portfolio. Um, before that, is the minister still here? The deputy minister? Honorable Kenneth Masuko? Yes, Chair, I'm here. Any input? No, Chair, I agree with everything. Okay. Thank uh, you. Okay. So, uh, honorable members, um let me take this opportunity and thank all of you um, for the sterling work that uh, we have done uh, for this term and also uh, thank the department uh, for subjecting uh, itself uh, to our oversight and uh, we are going to uh, always be hard and whip the department because we want to see a, a better version of it and uh, improvement. Um, at all times and uh, our 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 team as the portfolio committee uh, let me also take this opportunity and thank all of you uh, to for giving us support uh, unconditionally as a portfolio committee and uh, we always uh, harsh and uh, you always under pressure, uh, but we are hoping uh, that you have time to rest uh, enough uh, so that when we come back, uh, we are more energized uh, as a team uh, because between you and the portfolio committee, there is no bosses. Uh, we are a team and uh, we're hoping uh, that uh, Father God will give the DG more strength uh, to run the department and deal with what Honorable Bachman has been consistent in raising. Uh, the anatomy of two pools in one crawl uh, or probably it does not need Father God anymore, but Oar Tambo himself, uh, the legend in which the building is named after uh, of Derko. So um, uh, our our media team in Parliament, PMG, and and all those of being a support to our portfolio committee. Uh, we thank you very much, uh, hoping to see you. I hear people are crying that the president is closing the country and it's December. There will be no stray animals, people buzzle challenging, no big events and whatever. People are complaining out there. As, as we are sitting here in social media, uh, people are very frustrated there. So uh, thank you very much, uh, honorable members. Uh, our meeting is adjourned. Uh, as much as uh, this is our last portfolio committee that does not stop us from communicating through the love of the man. Please call me when you need anything. My so, 
Yeah, thank you very much, honorable members. Our meeting is adjourned. Thank you, Chair, and the May God bless you too. Merry Christmas, everybody. Happy New Year. Thank you. Merry Christmas.